Welcome back, guys. It is the Island Bar Edition, but not the Island Bar we were all hoping for. So I'm going to show you some pictures here um, and some video of the final product and then kind of walk you through on how we got from point A to point B. All right, so the first thing you may notice here is the TV is on the opposite side of where it lies now. Um, but in regards to the island here, what you see is just those typical wrapped posts um, that you'll see in finished basements because you got to do something with those posts. So the concept we were basically going with was, you know, let's have an area here between these posts that we can have a place to sit, eat, watch TV, or do some work, you know, and be able to push the chairs in underneath. So once we have an idea of what we want, we need some inspiration. We need some ideas to uh, start designing this. And once we get the design, um, you start working on the fine details. What, where you want electricity to be, where you want lighting to be, items like that, because all that stuff's gotta be done on the front end. And those decisions have to be made before, um, you know, really construction starts. So having done my basement last year, there's always things that you find that you, you wish you could have changed and done something different and this is one of them and if you notice where the posts are and you notice how there's a bump out on the left side of that post and it just allows for a larger top and for you to push in the chairs and by doing that even though you push the couch a little bit closer to the TV it's not a huge loss in space um, it's actually more of a gain because you're able to push those chairs in so this is the inspirational piece that I kind of found, ran it through Tyler. They like that idea, that concept. And so now we had our concept and our idea, and now we needed to start working on our fine details. Looking at the final product here, let's kind of go through it and we'll start working backwards um, to get a lot of those questions answered that we talked about with the electrical and the lighting and stuff like that that way we get to the finished product that we desire so the very first thing we talked about was the post and we wanted something more substantial and bulky compared to what was in there before and so we focused on that and came up with this dimension and as i talked to him about it we really want a crown at the top because that's just a nice finishing feature now, in order to have that crown at the top, we needed space on the ceiling to be able to put that in. And so that brought up our very first obstacle was the bulkhead that was there wasn't going to give us that spacing. So that's why you see in some of the pictures, there's two by fours and stuff like that up above it. We needed to kick that out three and a half inches in order to do that so we could get the crown up there but the crown wasn't sitting on that edge that it gave us an inch or two so now that we have the construction aspect of it figured out here the next phase was let's look at the lighting of it and one of the things i brought up and mentioned was you know if you're going to be watching a movie or watching a game you don't necessarily want to have all the lights on and so if you're sitting at the table eating or doing work or something like that it would be nice to have some lighting that just kind of shoots down there without messing up lighting for the entire room so that's how we came about with those lights so now with the lighting taken care of we're going to take a look at the electricity and there were a couple things that they wanted to make sure they have and that was a place where they could charge their phones or devices and set them up there and so next to the light switch on the left side of the post we put an output in and on that it already has a usb and an uh, apple rapid charger built into the outlet itself so that took care of that issue so then on the other side we just put a couple outlets in and that takes care of all of our electricity so that takes care of that and let's start looking at construction So if you look at the top, um, actually, let's just take a look at the top of the left post and you can see how close that post already was to the bulkhead. 
working backwards, we needed to go out three inches and then the drywall on top of those two by fours gives us our three and a half inches. Uh, ended up changing on where that uh, outlet was going to come in. Initially, I was going to have it on the inside of that right post, but as I was thinking about it, when you come down the stairs, you look directly at that right post, and I didn't want to see an outlet switch, so I put it on the inside of the left post, so when you come down, you really don't see it. So those are just little details um, that I try to pay attention to. So the electricity actually came in from the left post, went down, and then wrapped around that half wall, and side on that bottom so we're a little bit further into construction here and as I mentioned right before that that wiring you see it going down the left post now goes into the uh, light switch and the outlet and then wrapping down and around so the other part to look at as I mentioned the post being completely out of you know square look at the top right of the left post and how far that is out when you compare it to the bottom and then same with the bottom of the other one compared to the top so it it was pretty far out but we were able to fix it wasn't a big deal Now we're just here on the other side of the island bar. So you can see one of the outlets is in. We haven't installed the other one. And when you install this, just, you know, it's a treated two by four that's in contact with the concrete. Tap cons are, you know, drilled into the concrete and then all the uh, studs are just 16 on center. So that's that. Hey, hey, it's always a good day when you get drywall up and have the drywall guys come in and smooth some things out. So next step is some wainscoting. All right, so a lot's actually happened here. We've, uh, we've done some painting in the entire basement and you can see the crowns up on the posts. Got the light switch installed and now we're installing some wainscoting here. Make this an island bar, baby. So there's so many tools that I would suggest to you guys, but a good quality laser level is a must have. I probably use my laser level more than anything to hang pictures. And it's a great thing to have because you know it is always spot on. So get yourself a laser level, throw on some Grateful Dead and start jamming out and building an island bar. Now you can just watch a guy work. So as I'm watching this, a little pro tip here, and this happens earlier in construction, but knowing that the wainscoting is going to be going on, you see where the, the styles are. I made sure that my outlets weren't going to interfere at all, and so I wouldn't have to notch out or do anything goofy there, that they would be plenty far away from those styles. All right, so we've made some really good progress here. And basically the last thing we have on this is the top itself. And with the top that we're going to put on, it's a temporary top because we have talked about in the future, in the next year or two of doing a live edge top. And that's where, you know, the actual grains in and out on, on the edges. So we've talked about doing that. So in the meantime here, what we're going to do is we're gonna take just some maple ply and face around it and stain it that color. Now, the little bit of a challenge that we had on this is that distance and the width is a little bit more than eight foot. And 
so a single piece of plywood only goes to eight foot. It's kind of a blessing and a curse. So here's the blessing. The curse in it is that it's, you know, too short for the area that we need. But the blessing in it is that when you have posts like this, it actually made it a little bit easier to build it and install it and make sure that you had everything good in one shot. So I just did a cross cut here and I'm gonna set a template. So I just had, these were all boxes from their, uh, their sofas. And so I just made a template out of that area to make sure that I had it just perfectly right on exactly where I wanted it. And then just brought it over to my house and laid it out and set it up. So I'm actually getting ready to cut all the face frame and get all that stained. But here it is kind of part way through construction. So it, if you see down the middle, um, I use some just three quarter inch and ran it down the middle. So that gave us a little more length. And then we ran some three quarter inch facing around the edges and on the sides and it, it worked out pretty well. So after getting the top in and putting a couple more coats of sealer on it, this is our finished product. really happy with how it came out. So here we are with all the lights out, but we have the island lights on and those are at full blast right there. And here we are, we have them dimmed and this is the middle of the day. This was a really bright sunny day this day. So the lighting's fantastic. It's just right overhead and that's how we got from that to this. It sure would be nice if I could actually take a second to sit down and enjoy this basement. Hey Alexa, YouTube Indy 500. And now for the first time since 2019, all we see are packed grandstands, blue skies above, and ready to celebrate a Memorial Weekend Classic. This is and always will be the greatest spectacle in racing. This is the Indianapolis 500. Well, you just don't know what indie means. <laughs> 